So today's service call is a walk-in freezer, temping in the 20s. And they're saying their ice cream is all soft. They say they noticed it yesterday. Here's my unit, that's the back of my evaporator coil, so we do not have an iced up condition. I've got a thermometer in here right now to monitor box temp. And I'm gonna go ahead and go onto the roof and check the system out. My little thermometer right there is 23 degrees, so it seems about 20 in the 20s. Um, we come up here to the ice cream. Oh yeah, that ice cream is milk. Ice cream needs to be in a negative 10 to be firm and hard. So I'm up on the roof, here's our equipment. Visually, we've got a clear sight glass, condenser fan motors are running, the condenser is clean. I mean, it's looking okay, but I will say that for a walk-in freezer, I should see some frost. And we're not, you know, usually you'll see this being frosty and feel a lot colder. So we're gonna go ahead and gauge up because I feel the need and see what's going on within the system. All right, so this unit is actually cycling off. I have a feeling that it's cycling off on temperature because it just turned on when I, it had satisfied and then it just turned back on. And let's look at our box temp. Our box temp is 24 degrees. So I think we need to be looking downstairs because our refrigerant pressures don't look horrible. It's actually pumping down right now. So that's kind of strange. So yeah, I'm gonna jump onto the roof or downstairs and look at that temperature controller and see what's going on with that. It's interesting. So this thing is satisfied and we're currently at 24 degrees in the box. Let's take a look at this temp control. Yeah, so we've got a temperature controller problem. Well, it was set for 25 degrees, so that's a problem. Um, yeah. So now I need to make a decision. See that? I don't like when they mount these controls on the coil because as they get older, they start to vibrate out of adjustment. Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys caught what happened there. We had a service call on a walk-in freezer that wasn't working. The complaint was that it was maintaining 25 degrees. So when I went onto the roof, I found that the unit was cycling on and off normally. Okay, so it was pumping down and then eventually turning back on. So what I ended up finding was that the evaporator's temperature controller had vibrated itself up to 25 degrees. It's a very common thing on those evaporator coils where they mount the control on the coil itself. In the beginning, they won't do that, but after some time, the controls, the little dial starts to get a little weak and it'll just be very sensitive to vibration and it just naturally happens. In this instance, I brought that to the customer's attention and asked them what they wanted to do and they wanted to go ahead and wait. They did not want me to change the control. Um, because we're kind of working on a bigger picture here and they want to start replacing that equipment actually. So for now, they just wanted me to go ahead and adjust it down and then I'm submitting some quotes to go ahead and upgrade that equipment for them. They've already done their walk-in cooler and they just like to be proactive and want to go ahead and do the walk-in freezer because they just don't want to run into more problems next summer. So with that being said, I just kind of want to go over a little bit real quick, okay? So the system was pumping down. What that means was that the temperature controller was shutting down the liquid line solenoid valve and the refrigerant flow was being stopped at the liquid line solenoid valve, okay? So coming out of the receiver, we have a liquid line running downstairs and right before the metering device, the expansion valve, there's a solenoid valve, okay? That valve regulates the refrigerant flow. It's either on or off and it's controlled by the temperature controller. So if that valve is open, then the refrigerant flows through the TXV, through the evaporator coil, comes out of the evaporator coil now on the suction line and goes back up to the compressor, gets pumped through the compressor out of the discharge line, runs through your condenser, comes out of the condenser, it turns into a liquid in the condenser, then runs down to the metering device or expansion valve, and then starts the cycle all over again. Okay, it's important to remember that at the condenser, we reject the heat of the refrigerant. In the evaporator, we absorb the heat of the space, okay? So we've got the nice uh, air running over the evaporator coil. It's pulling the heat out of the air, 
absorbing it into the refrigerant, pumping it back upstairs, then changing the state of the refrigerant as it pumps through the compressor. Actually, I should say it changes the state once it comes out of the uh, condenser, but pumps from the compressor into the condenser, then changes the refrigerant back into a liquid, then starts the process over and over and over again until the box temperature gets satisfied. So in our case, the box temperature was satisfying too early. We were hoping for a negative 10 degree space temperature or box temperature inside that walk-in freezer, and we were maintaining a positive 25 degrees. So therefore we had nice milky ice cream, which is not what the customer wanted, okay? So went ahead and repaired that, and the system is working good. And as far as I say repair, I simply just turn the control down to negative 10 and watch the box come down and everything was good. All right, guys, hopefully you learned something. Let me know if you guys have any feedback. Uh, send me an email. All my information is in the show notes in the video and we'll see you guys on the next one, okay?